set up a hypothetical for you here. Let's say you go to a concert. One of your favorite artists of all time, favorite music artists, you go to a concert and then you get in line to go get something signed by the artist. But the line's super long, it looks like prices are gonna be super expensive to get this thing signed, but you run into a guy who says, hey, it's okay, I know how to do their signature, just give me like a third of the cost, I'll sign the thing, no one's gonna know. Do you get it signed? And if you do, let's say you do, okay, let's say you do get it signed, you bring it home, you frame it, you put it up on the wall, you invite your friends over, and your friends who don't know any better, because it's a really obscure band that you heard once in college, are like, oh, hey, cool, you got the thing signed. And you're just like, yeah, totally signed by the guy who, by the music I listened to. He played a tuna fish on a xylophone. It was really strange. And then sometime down the road, you someone's like, hey, you got a thing signed by that really obscure band I like. Can I buy that from you? And then you're like, this guy's dumb. He clearly doesn't know anything about it, because that's very obviously not this... But yeah, you know what? It's totally a thing. I'll sell it to you. Okay, so... What does all this have to do with video games? That's a huge stretch from what I talk about on this show. How this correlates to video games are reproduction cartridges. Now, I've been at a couple of conventions over the last couple weeks, and I ran into a guy at a table at one of these cons who was selling a whole bunch of NES games, just a ton of games, and something immediately caught my eye. It was a copy of DuckTales 2. Not one, but two of them. Two copies of DuckTales 2, just out with the rest of the common games, right? And I'm like, hey, that's kind of an expensive game. That's really weird. I pick it up, and I immediately saw that the label is bad, really bad. At the very least, it was a reproduction label. Um, and the price tag was like 40 bucks, and that's strange for DuckTales 2. And I was like, huh, if this is a reproduction, it doesn't say reproduction anywhere on the cartridge. And that's a, that's a problem. I'll go into why in a little bit. Has has a lot to do with the, the, the beginning story here, right? Uh, but I, I asked the guy, and I'm like, hey, you, is this a reproduction cartridge in DuckTales 2? Because it doesn't... And immediately, he was really happy to be like, oh yeah, these are both reproduction cartridges. And I'm like, okay, but it doesn't say reproduction anywhere on the label. And he, again, he was just like, oh yeah, that's, that's just... Anyone who knows what they're looking for can see that the weight of the cartridge is wrong and that the label's really bad. And I'm like, that's kind of a... It's kind of a bullshit excuse. On a normal day, I would have just set the thing down, set the cartridge down, and just kind of walked away from it. And, and, and just for the record, I'm not going to name the person. I'm not going to give you guys the person's name. I don't want any hate going directly to anyone. It was mostly because I don't remember who it was. I put the cartridge down and I was like, oh, that's kind of that's kind of lame. That's not really what I'm looking for. I want the genuine thing. And he was very happy to point out that he also had a reproduction of Flintstone's Surprise at Dinosaur Peak. For those uninitiated, this is a very rare game. We're talking super expensive. So I was like, okay. Also unlabeled, it doesn't say anywhere a reproduction cartridge. And then he's like, checked out this copy of Surprise Dinosaur Peak that's not labeled, it doesn't say reproduction anywhere. Big problem. Big problem amplified because he then said that he has a legitimate copy of Surprise at Dinosaur Peak that he's trying to sell. Um... <laughs> So I was like, oh, it's a legitimate cartridge. And of course the reproduction, the obvious reproduction, the label was terrible. Again, horrible quality. Uh, but the copy that he was selling, as you'll see in this picture, it looked like it could be legit. It looked like it could be totally legit and fine. Um, but I'll explain what the problem with that cartridge was first. Um, the surprise at Dinosaur Peak was being sold for $50. Now. Let's talk about game cart value. Let's talk about reproduction cartridges and why label not, not being properly labeled is a problem. His excuse for not putting down the reproduction, like labeling that it's a reproduction on these cartridges, his excuse was, oh, it's for the collector so that they can have something to put on their shelf. Well, a shitty reason like that, you can go. That's kind of why I started off this video with the whole not legitimate signature, but someone who doesn't know any better thinks that it's a totally re real signature. Because to the untrained eye, to someone who doesn't know what a reproduction is, it could totally pass. It could pass. Like, yeah, you could see probably someone who doesn't know any better would look at the label and be like, huh, that quality's terrible, but it's a 30-year-old game. No excuse. Like, having this trophy piece for your shelf 
short term might be like a really cool thing to have. So you can be like, dude, check out this totally real caveman games. And it's not a re- Okay, so like I said, he had the DuckTales 2 for $40, which uh, anyone want to come up, be our next contestant on our big game show? What's the actual price? That DuckTales goes for about $150 loose, just cartridge only. Now, that's not mind blowing like some other cartridges. I have, like this Zombie Nation, last I price checked it, was about $300 loose. Why is it not in a protective case? It got damaged and moving. That's why it's- But selling? Flintstones 2, he was selling Flintstones Surprise at Dinosaur Peak for $50 when the actual retail, retail, when the actual going price for that cart is, you wanna take a guess? 200? No. 300? No, pump those numbers up. $773.63 the last time the game was bought online. Almost $800 cartridge and this guy is selling $50 knockoffs that play the same, to the untrained eye, to someone who doesn't know any better, would be like, holy shit, this guy doesn't know what he had. He knows exactly what he has. He knows exactly what he's doing. So why is this a problem? Well, again, to the untrained eye, oh, that's a totally legitimate game that I now have in my possession. I paid $50 for. Let me turn it around and sell it for $800. Or whatever. Oh, it is hot in here. Orissa can wear the hat. So someone who doesn't know any better now has a reproduction game in their possession that they don't know is reproduced. Um, and now they could either A, accidentally swindle someone, B, purposefully swindle someone if someone knows what's going on, or like the worst case scenario, let's say, let's say I have these games in my collection, I die tomorrow. Well, Heather needs to get rid of my stuff. So now, like she knows better, so she wouldn't do this, but for the example, Heather doesn't know any better, let's say. And she goes to sell all these games. Well, now she's like, oh, okay, well, this game's legit, this game. The internet says this is a $770 game, not knowing it's reproduction. Do you see where I'm going with this? And I think the thing that triggered me the most about this is I asked the guy, hey, what games can, what consoles can you easily reproduce for? And he's like, NES. N64 super easy to make reproductions of. And while I haven't done it, I can do Super Nintendo too. I was like, that's a lot of games. There's a lot of games on those platforms worth a lot of money. So I, I brought my attention back to the legitimate uh, Surprise at Dinosaur Peak that he had on the table. And I said, hey, can you open that up for me? Actually, hold on. Let me give you an example of how mind-numbingly easy what I'm about to say is. I said, hey, can you do me a favor and open up that legitimate copy of Surprise at Dinosaur Peak? I'm interested. I would like to see, make sure that the board is legit. I might buy this. He goes, no, because it's too hard to open up these games and I don't want to do that while I'm at a convention. This is a security bit screwdriver that you can buy on eBay for what, $5 if that? This is a cartridge that this bit fits to. This screwdriver fits to most of these games, but anyway, I don't even have a table right now. I've got the floor, you, your attention, and my burning rage at this guy. I'm, I'm doing better than most people do in a week right now. Okay, so. <laughs> Maybe I should, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this on the couch so I can actually get these screws out because now I'm just making, oh look, it came right out because the end of this is magnetic. I'm just being hasty. I haven't opened these up in a while. And this one didn't come up for some reason, but three. Three screws took me 20 seconds. Boom, game's open. Look at that. That's a circuit board. And you know what's really fun about this? Is that you can very easily pop it out, okay? Don't touch the contacts, but you can see the chips. Now this isn't gonna be what every game inside of an NES cart looks like, but for this example, this Adventures at the Magic Kingdom, you see how hard that was? You see how long that took me to open the game up and verify something? As soon as he said, I'm just gonna close this up real quick, just cause I'm, I'm heated. Oh no, that's why I wanted to close it up real quick. I dropped the screw inside the couch. Boom, it's back together. It took what, a couple minutes tops, mostly cause I'm slow and bad. Look, the point is, is that he's trying to sell reproduction games at the same time as he's trying to sell a legitimate game 
after admitting that reproducing NES cards is super easy, and he wasn't willing to open up that cart. And as far as I'm concerned, everything that he had on his table is fake, even the common games. Why would someone reproduce a common game? Who knows? But the point is, is that if he's not willing to prove, if his only proof is that the label is torn and worn and looks like what it should be, and the game weighs about the same. So what's the lesson that you should take away from this video? If you're going to be collecting retro games like this, just know that there are people out there willing to swindle you out of expense, out of a lot of money for some expensive games. If you're gonna buy games at a trade show and someone, some $300, $400, whatever, comes up, ask the person to open it. Make sure you verify the chips. There's pictures online. I don't have the information right now because I'm not like deep into the gem hunt, but I'll find it for you. <laughs> There's databases online that show you what the chip set chip what the chip sets of each game should look like. So I guess what I'm stressing is well, a fuck that guy. But secondly, when spending an exorbitant amount of money for a collector's piece, be safe. Okay, protect yourself. Don't do not spend your money on a person who's not willing to be completely transparent for you. Once we start talking about hundreds of dollars worth of merchandise, uh, for, especially for one item, take a step back. I know I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm going to. Just take a step back, you know, go about it slow, take the extra time, make sure the proof is there, and just collect safely, my friends. That's, that's the end of the day. That guy triggered me to hell and back, clearly, because it took me, what, two or three weeks to make a video about it, and I'm still heated about it? This is a completely unscripted video, by the way. This is a whole, whole new territory for me. But either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed me rambling and ranting and just being generally fucking angry. <laughs> Can't even say that. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Stay awesome. Don't do anything that I wouldn't do. Collect safely. And we'll catch you next time. High five from across the park. <laughs>